So you notice the smaller the flowers get, the more I cluster them, the more flowers I have in that cluster. So it doesn't look like it's unusual because uh, I think the smaller flowers need to kind of, um, kind of, you know, gang together, I guess. And when you start adding leaves in, the larger the flower is around it, I think the larger the leaf that you want. So for instance, if you're around a tulip, go ahead and have a longer leaf that goes with that tulip like this, like that. And don't forget that you want to have all of these little curly cues like I put up in here. I'm going to add a leaf in here. And this is just a matter now of starting to fill in the space with leaves and with buds, things that you like. And in just a little while, we'll go back and ink them. A little vine curly cue. And then add another leaf. Remember, you can have all sorts of leaves on the same vine, even though it wouldn't happen in nature. We're going to go ahead and do that because it sort of looks like a bouquet that way. I'm going to do some kind of spiky leaves, I think, with these. More like this. Now, if you actually go back and look into a farmer's almanac or some kind of, you know, a seed catalog or something, uh, you might find that the, their leaves, there are particular leaves that go with these kinds of flowers, if, they, you can, if you can figure out which flowers these are supposed to be. And then you might want to go ahead and change it up a little bit. But this is just supposed to be a fanciful, sweet flower uh, arrangement for your mom. And so it doesn't have to be perfect. Just change them up as you go. Kind of cluster the leaves as well. Some of them will be more a uh, teardrop shape and some of them will be a little bit spikier. And don't forget to add a couple little curly cues in here as we go. There's a good place for one. And if you have um, duplicated the flowers from one side to the other, like I've done with these little bluebells that I like so much. Try and duplicate the leaf pattern as well, so it looks like it's consistent in that way. just about there. Did you add in any of the little buds? I only added a few in here up at the top, just kind of add a little bit of consistency to it, uh, some variety as well. And now we're going to go ahead and draw in the I love you mom or I love you, whatever you have space for. It might help for you to actually get a straight line or a ruler so that you can draw them in straight. You can just use the edge of a piece of paper if you want to so that you make, sure, you make sure that you've got them drawn in. Um, you can use a ruler, like I said, or you can just draw them in like this. Make sure you like the placement of them. Draw this very lightly because, of course, then we are going to go back in and we're going to change this up in a little while. We're going to erase everything and add our, our inking. Make sure I didn't move that too much. So I'm actually going to do that third kind that we, uh, that we learned how to do. And I'm going to start with just drawing in or writing in, I love you, Mom. You can do whichever kind that you like the best. That's totally up to you. 
and then I'm going to go back in and add the horizontal line, or excuse me, the vertical lines. Remember, we doubled up on the vertical lines and put the serifs on the end. Like this. And remember on these rounded letters, the tops and the bottoms are going to stay uh, flat. And you're going to round out the sides. And when you get to one where there is diagonals in the letter, like the V and the Ys, decide which of those strokes is going to actually get the double line. For me, I always do it on the first stroke of the letter. And for the mom, I think I'm actually going to put two of them like that. And if the letter gets too close together, you can go to the outside or to the inside to make sure that you've got space for them. It was a little bit tougher because it has a curve like that. And I'm going to put an exclamation point with a little curly cue at the bottom. Okay, now this is ready to be inked in, and then if you color it, then of course it would be even more beautiful. I have had a few people ask me about ink pens, and I wanna show you some examples of ones that you might wanna try. Uh, I love a G2 pen. This is from Pilot. Uh, this is a gel pen, so if you were to try to use watercolor on top of it, it actually would smear or it would uh, run. So you wouldn't want to use this uh, if you were going to paint, but if you're going to do something like color pencils or crayons or pastels on top, you certainly could use something like this. Uh, the one that you see me use a lot is called the Elite Roller Pen, and this one is by IMC I Ink. Uh, and I don't know where to find this one. I just actually picked this one up. A student left it in my classroom, so I use that one a lot. And then the more professional ones, of course, are sets like this Micron pen, or you could use a Sharpie. And these vary in, in pen uh, width at the, that point is thicker on some of them, all the way from point zero, uh, a zero, zero 005, which is really, really fine, ultra fine, all the way up to a zero 08, which is a much thicker line. And remember we talked about when we were doing our pens that you could, that um, when we were drawing them in with ink, that it's nice to have a variety of line weight or line widths so that it's not just all one. You can use a Sharpie, but those bleed through a lot of paper. So if you're gonna do that, put a piece of paper underneath, a scrap piece of paper, so it doesn't bleed to the side that you want to um, draw or write on, write your message on. So again, I'm going to go back into time-lapse mode with this, and when I'm done, I'll call them back. Now, once all of this has dried thoroughly, don't forget to go back and erase it, and then go back and add color. I think this is a gift that anybody who has loved you as much as a mother has would love to have. They can either have a full page like this so that they can hang it on the wall and frame it, or you can send it as a card. Make sure that you practice first and like what you've got before you find do the final one, and if you like the practice, then you've got two. See you later.